I have been playing a lot of Spellbreak. It is very fun. And I am very bad. Dang it! Ugh. But it's very fun. But I'm very bad. <laughs> oh. But just being in the game and seeing the art style and the loading screens and the menus, it got me inspired to create my own Spellbreak themed Twitch alert. Like this. Let me show you how I did it. As always, we're going to start here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page and I'm going to right click in my media pool, go to timelines, create new timeline. We can name this and we're going to open custom settings to change the timeline resolution. For this alert, we are going to use a resolution of 1280 by 256 because this alert will only ever take up a small portion of your screen. You don't need it to be full HD. For this alert, we are going to recreate the graphic that is used to launch the game and that is used to queue for a match. It's this really cool uh, diagonal shape with these cool accents in the corners. I like it and now we're gonna recreate it. We're gonna start by creating a pixel grid. This is a method I've used on this channel before and it's something I learned from friend of the channel, Camera Tim. A link to his channel will be in the description, check him out. So I'm gonna create a new background node and then move over to the image settings of that in the inspector and uncheck auto resolution and change that width and height to 50 pixels by 10. And then I'll jump back and change that to a white as well. Then we're gonna right click in this viewer, go to options, show pixel grid, right click again, go to controls and select snap to pixel. And then just for reference, we can right click again, go to guides and click show guide. This will help us center anything we create in frame. Then we'll click to add another background node, load that up in viewer two. And I'm gonna change this color to a nice sort of neutral gold color. That looks pretty good. And on that, we are going to add a polygon mask. By default, you won't have anything, and that's because we need to draw our mask on this background node. We're actually gonna add this mask to the second background node in the viewer, which is showing the first background node with this pixel grid. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and real quick, I'm going to sketch out this diamond shape. So I'm gonna start adding these points. And once I finish that mask, we can select each of those points and move them so they are snapped pixel perfect. So we have perfectly straight lines and a perfectly parallel image. And I was actually one grid off, but when I drag this to that bottom line, you'll see it straightens itself right out. This will be the core shape this alert is built off, and we're gonna use this one mask to affect other masks and create other shapes that layer on top of each other. So I'm gonna zoom in, select this polygon node, and the first thing I'm actually gonna do is pull down this border width. So it's just a little bit smaller, then I'm going to copy and paste that polygon node, so I have another copy. I'm going to uncheck solid, and then I'm going to pull back up border width. So you see now instead of a solid, we have an outline along that mask. So if we increase that border width just a little bit, you'll get this image with this really nice shadow. Uh, one thing to note, on the border style, by default, it will be capped. So if we zoom in, you'll see that it'll have a little bit of a squared off edge, but if we click this, it'll bring it to a nice point. Next, we are going to take this background node, copy and paste it. And the first mask we are going to add to this is actually a rectangle mask. And we're gonna increase the size of this rectangle so that the corners sort of fill in this empty space. But right now, if we were to pull this background up on our viewer, you would see that it's a solid shape. So we need to go into that rectangle mask, uncheck solid and pull up border width. We want that same soft outline like we had before. And then we are going to take the output of this new background node and connect it to the output of our first background node. So it creates a merge. And then when we preview that, you will see that this rectangle box is extending and sort of filling in this space in the corners. But we don't want these corner pieces to actually touch our main shape. 
So to do that, grab the first polygon mask we created, copy, paste that, and add that to our second shape. And then with that node selected, I'm gonna change the paint node from merge to subtract. And then if I pull up the border width, if I zoom in, you'll see that it is actually subtracting from this rectangle mask, but it is subtracting in a perfectly uniform way around the edge of this diamond shape. From there, you can tweak the rectangle mask however you want, and it will perfectly adjust subtracting that space right next to the diamond. And next, we're actually gonna take that rectangle mask, copy and paste it right in that same small node tree. And if we pull down this second one, you'll see that it creates a copy. And the line I'm trying to walk is I want this to be nice and sort of chunky, but I also wanna make sure that we keep this little indent right there, just for a little design flair. That I think is pretty good. And if we look at just that effect, uh, these corners add a really nice accent to this piece that I like. With this nice neutral gold color, the next thing we're going to do is add some really subtle shine. So with this merge selected, I'm going to add another merge real quick. And then in that, I'm going to pull down the fast noise node. I'm going to pipe that over our shape and preview that merge. And here you will see this very sort of hazy fog texture. But what we're going to do is hop into fast noise, pull up the contrast just a little bit, and pull up the scale just a little bit again. And in the merge node, we are gonna change the apply mode from normal to overlay. And you'll see that it is now sort of adding these highlights over this gold texture. And actually, if we go back into fast noise and pull up the seethe rate just a little bit, if we scrub our timeline, you'll see that these highlights actually move over the surface. But if you look, you'll see that this fast noise is also affecting the background. It is adding this texture onto the transparent layer, which we don't want. So we're gonna go to our merge that has our entire image, pull the output of that into the mask input of fast noise. And you'll see what that instantly does. If we preview just the fast noise layer, you'll see that that noise is only existing where that shape exists in space. It's using the alpha layer or the transparency layer of that shape we created to tell the fast noise where to exist. So now we've got a really nice shine sort of coming in and out. I might pull down the brightness of that shine just a little bit so that's a little more subtle. It's kind of dark now, so I'll actually pull back the contrast. Maybe bring shine up a little bit. That looks really nice. And coming out of that merge, I'm actually gonna add a glow. Again, there are a few glows. We're gonna use the glow with a little magic wand. And if we preview that glow, you'll see that by default, it is coming on a little strong. It really sort of pushes these highlights. So I'm actually gonna crank up the shine threshold and then slowly bring it back down, find a sort of bright scene. I'm gonna slowly bring down the shrine threshold until it's just barely starting to affect the scene. And I might increase the spread a little bit so it evens it out as well. But now when we scrub our timeline, you'll see that we have this really cool kind of subtle shine feature that just comes in and out. Next, we need to add text to our alert. So I'm going to add a text plus node and grab the output from that text, connect it to the output of the glow, which will automatically create a merge node. And if I preview that merge node and in the text, I can type, subscriber and then i can pull in a cool font something a little magical i used this opta first font i found it on da font a link to that will be in the description as well and i'm changing this color to a sort of neutral dark with maybe just a, a tint of orange or a tint of gold something something a little earthy and to help our text integrate into the scene more, we are going to use the shading controls in the text plus node. With our text selected in our inspector, we're gonna move over to this paintbrush icon that is for shading. The main text you create will always be shading element one. So we're gonna to go to shading element two, enable that. By default, it is this red outline, but we're gonna change that to a white outline, increase the thickness, and then we're gonna scroll down to softness. We can increase both that XY softness and pull up the glow. You can adjust to fit. I'm actually gonna make this pretty vibrant, but then scroll up and pull down the overall opacity to taste, just so you have this really nice sort of clean, but sort of arcane glow behind it. Then we're gonna create one more element. We're gonna turn on shading element three. 
by default it is this black shadow and on this black shadow i'm going to change it from text fill to text outline so i can increase the size of that just a little bit and so when we pull up the softness behind this glow we get this really nice shadow out in the background this is looking pretty good so right now i'm going to add a simple animation to this text and all i'm going to do here is go to the beginning of my timeline set a keyframe on tracking and to pull that down so that these letters are a little squished and kind of close to each other but then i can go to the end of my timeline pull that tracking back up so that they are quite a bit further apart but still legible so that over the course of our alert these letters will just slowly expand over the alert. All we have left to do is add the main animation for this alert popping in and out of our scene. So on our last merge node here, we're going to add a transform node. And since this is the end, we can just pipe that directly into our own media out and preview that. And for this transform, we're going to have a really simple pop in or a scale up in size. So first, I'm going to set a keyframe a little under a second into our scene with the size at one, so we know that's where we want it to end. Then if we go back to zero, we can set that size to zero. And if we preview that as it is, you'll see that it'll scale up, it'll be full screen, and it'll stop. We can make this a little more exciting. And to do that, we're gonna open the spline viewer. We're gonna open this spline viewer, and I'm gonna come to these dots and select show only selected tool, so that when we have our transform node selected, that is the only thing we have here, and I can click on size. And if we click zoom to fit, you'll see that this is the motion we just keyframed. Over this period of time, our alert scales up and sits at full size. We're gonna have this alert bounce in and to really sell that effect, what we wanna do is overshoot the size so it gets too large, then a little too small, then just a hair too large before it finally rests at the size we intend. So to do that, I'm gonna zoom to fit again and I am going to add a keyframe just by clicking on our spline and I'm gonna pull that keyframe up so it is a little above where we rest. And I can add another keyframe, pull it not as far below where it rests, and then one final keyframe, and that will be just a little overshoot, but that will also be just very close to when we reach our final resting point. And if we select all of those keyframes and we click S, that will automatically create this smooth motion. So now if we preview this, we'll see how it looks. This is pretty good. It'll just take some minor adjustment, but you can see that little wiggle at the end really sells this bouncy motion. One thing I know I want is that initial zoom to be faster. So I'm gonna select these keyframes towards the end and drag them all closer. So I'm gonna select that first keyframe, grab that handle and pull it so it's going straight towards that second keyframe. If we preview now, that first movement is quite a bit faster, but not quite fast enough. So let's pull all those pull them back and that looks really nice. It comes in nice and quick, it bounces at the end but it doesn't take too long to bounce before it rests at that full size. That was the animation for the alert coming into our scene but now we need to animate the alert coming out of our scene. So the first thing I'm gonna do is slide towards the end of our timeline then I can select all of these keyframes, copy, and if I click in that spline viewer, it'll set a keyframe, and if I paste, it'll paste the keyframes in that same order. So it'll look pretty bad, but if I select all of those and come down here to reverse, you'll see that it perfectly reverses that motion. The thing to remember is that we are going for natural motion. That extra bounce we had on our animate in won't be natural to animate out. When something gets moving, it doesn't slowly get going back and forth. So we're gonna to need to change up this animation just a little bit. You'll see if we preview that, that jiggle feels unnatural when it's coming from that motion. So we're gonna scale in and we're actually gonna delete these two middle keyframes on that wiggle so that all our alert does, it starts at full, it slowly scales up just a little bit and then pushes back until it disappears. In animation, this is called anticipation. You know the alert is gonna slide back into space and disappear, but to help sell that motion, right before it pushes back, we want it to slowly scale up and then disappear. This is close, but I'm actually gonna select that node, click F this time to flatten so that the scale up isn't quite so egregious, and then I'm gonna pull it so it happens a little sooner. And I really like the look of that. Just a really subtle scale up before the scale down and it pushes it away. And the last thing we're gonna do on this transform is come over to settings and toggle on motion blur with a quality of about six. 
And if we hop into our edit page and let this entire animation render, you'll get this really nice bouncing motion at the beginning, the text will have some ongoing animation, and then the entire alert will push back and fade out. I like how this looks, especially having that fast noise layer on the background shape gives it just a little bit of texture, a little bit of shading, and keeps it from being too flat. And your Spellbreak themed Twitch alert is complete. All you would then need to do to use this in your stream would be to export with the alpha layer and then convert that into something stream friendly like WebM. If you want more info on that, you can watch this other video I made where I do exactly that. I really hope this video was useful to you, even if you're not playing or streaming Spellbreak. I think some of the masking effects we went over could really help you in creating your own unique designs. If you are playing or streaming Spellbreak and using this transition on your stream, let me know. I would love to see it. That would make my day. And as always, if this video was useful to you and you want to see more like it, please subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks. I'll see you next time.